Hey, you all, Farmer Jesse here. If you watched the last video, you know why I am sitting in a field. Uh, Josh Satin was here on our farm to shoot a few videos, and we took a little time to sit down and just have some conversations about things. Uh, the first video was about kind of the boom of small-scale farming. We hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please leave some comments and likes so that we know, because um, we can do more of these videos. This video that you're watching now is going to be about uh, should farmers be doing content creation and those sorts of things. So we talk about content creation from the podcasting side and from the YouTube side. And um, if you enjoy it, let us know. Uh, like it, those sorts of things, share it. And uh, other than that, let's do it. All right, Jesse, I don't know who should kick this off because, uh, you know, we're going to talk about content creation today and, you know, I focus m more on video, but you're the podcaster, but what are we doing? Is this a podcast or is this a... This is a vlogcast. Vlogcast, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you want to talk about content creation for <laughs> farmers today? Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's a, such an important topic because if you're a farmer and you're just starting out or maybe you're like, uh, maybe I could film what I'm doing and make a little extra money while I'm doing it, you know, um, trying to parse that out and, see, you know, talk about from people who've done it for a long time and, uh, you know, just giving our insight on that because I think that that's an important, uh, I know that when I was homesteading, when it was just Hannah and I were, we had a small farm, but we like primarily were like, you know, raising goats and chickens and I mean, everything like pigs, we had everything. Um, I wasn't really aware of YouTube, but then later I was like, man, I really missed the boat there. That would have been some great content. Um, you know, I was aware of YouTube, but we just, we didn't, we didn't even have the internet. We didn't have any elect, even have electricity. So it was like, <laughs> that wasn't really an option, but I'm just, I'm thinking there are probably people who are doing really interesting things or just, you know, want to share their story and looking at things like YouTube and being like, does that make sense? Or looking at things like a podcast and being like, does that make sense for me? And I think it would be interesting for you and I to talk about like sort of dis not dispelling, but like saying, this is the amount of work that goes into it. And like, the returns that come in on it and i think intention is really important we should talk about that so i don't know what are your thoughts on that man this is yeah there's <laughs> a lot going on here i think uh you have to intention i think is important because i think why you're sharing your story and why you're doing that is important i also think you need to realize how much time and energy this go that goes into this stuff and i think you know i think content creators say that all the time and i don't think people understand like yeah. i you know, I, I put out two videos a week on my channel and it's a part-time job. And now, and for the last few years, I have not been a full-time farmer because I am a part-time content creator. Right. And I had to acknowledge that quickly if I want to continue to make the kind of content and the amount of content and the quality of content that I like to make, I had to make sacrifices. Because for me, like, I don't have the time and energy to do both and I have a wife and kids and there's only so much time in the day and I think you need to think about why you're doing it and what the benefit for either you or the community or your business and I think there's a lot of different options out there. Yeah. Yeah, you, your community, your community, your business. There's so many reasons to do it. Um, and the same thing goes with podcasting. I think when I first conceived of the No-Till Market Garden podcast, I was like this is going to be easy. I'm in a call farmers who I know or who will talk to me and I will just have a conversation. It'll take like an hour. I'll just like kind of whip that thing up and put it up online. That's a part-time job. And then you turn it into a business and wrote me into it too. So, well, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that <laughs> I needed some help. I, uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's, it's amazing how much time it takes and even money. Like there's, there's an investment part yeah. there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't pay for itself really fast. And I think that part of that is because what we do when we first start out on content creation is we re use really, uh, mediocre equipment. We don't often know what we're doing. We don't know how to advertise it. Um, and essentially the same way with a farm. Like if you don't invest that capital to begin with and you don't invest that time in like really studying that craft, um, it's not going to pay back very fast and it's going to be kind of expensive for a long time. Do you yeah. have any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of thoughts on that. Um, <laughs> when my channel got monetized, uh, I took most of the money and invested it in equipment pretty mm. much right from the beginning. I had to buy a new computer. If you're going to edit video, you need a fast computer. If you want to shoot, I started my channel on my phone, so you can definitely do that. 
But, you know, very quickly you're like, oh, I'd like to have a better picture. I'd like to have a better audio. I want to do this and that. And it may be something you're into anyways. Like maybe you're into audio. Maybe you're into video. Mm. And it's a good opportunity to learn those skills. But I think they're applicable for a lot of things. But I think people don't realize that there is a cost. Like, And, t- and not just money, but time as well. I mean, just, all right, I'm going to call this farmer for an hour. Well, then you have to edit the podcast. You have to upload the podcast. You have to then advertise it on social media. You have to update your website. You, I mean, the list keeps going on and on. So I think if you're going to take it seriously enough that you want to be consistent with it and and make an impact then you have to invest that time for sure did you make trellis to make you jealous with a cell phone no that i think that might have been my first uh video with an actual camera what camera did you have that was a canon m50 oh, okay yeah that's the one with the crazy 120 N- or 240 no 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 okay. that was no Slow-mo. that that's a great little camera um and the funny thing about that video was that the, it was the first time I think I, I think it was the first video with that camera and I couldn't figure out the audio. So the audio level is like super low if you listen to that video. <laughs> it's like the worst. <laughs> well, you're talking to the person who plugged the audio, who plugged my mic and my new camera in the wrong place for like the first two videos. You're admitting that now? I'll, I'll admit it. All right. All right. There you go. I'll admit a lot of things. And now, now we're, look at us, like podcasting or vlogcasting. We sur- yeah. I mean, it, it's it's entirely possible. It's fun. Like for, for me, I mean, with the podcast... I was like an NPR geek. Like I love radio. And so the that was kind of a natural like I wanted to do that. And the videos like I I like making the videos. I I enjoy, you know, the jokes and the, you know, the way the style that I do them. Uh, and I like sharing the information and also the we have sort of developed a good uh, uh comment section at No Till Grower. So like all a lot of the people that watch our videos have a lot of good insight. So it's it's been really uh, great for us to share that information and also like learn a lot while in the process. Um, and you know, the, as the old adage goes, like you, you, what is the old adage? I don't even know what it is it's about educating, you know, is the best way to learn is to teach or something. So like, yeah. Um, yeah. So that, I mean, that, that's been ex- our experience too. Uh, but like, it's something that I've enjoyed, especially the podcast It's like something I actually enjoy and actually want to do more of. All right. So I, I know the reason uh, that you got into the podcast was mainly just to learn more. You're like, I want to I want to learn more about no till farming. So I'm going to interview people. And for me, I don't know. It was it was a very different experience because, you know, I'm a former teacher. I taught high school for five years. I don't know if everybody knows that. But when I started my farm, I was like, hey, I got to I got to market this. I got to get really good at Instagram mm-hmm. and spent a lot of energy that first year. I posted every day for a year. And like yeah. worked really hard at it to grow my following. And then I just happened to, I'm a natural teacher. So I just started like explaining, I was doing like 59 second videos. This is before like reels and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. people were asking me more and more questions. And I just wanted to give more longer form content, start a YouTube channel. And like, I had no intention of it turning into what it turned into, putting the amount of time into it, the amount of money I've invested into equipment, but I've loved it. And I think both of us have felt very strongly about free content and that, you know, we're not charging for this and we're not selling things. And that's been super important to me. Uh, I think that we just need to be sharing more, but I don't think that's for everybody. I don't think that you can expect to just start making videos on YouTube and then have a big channel and making money from it and taking sponsors and all the kind of stuff that people see from YouTubers and that experience. Um, I think the more important thing is if it's Instagram or Facebook, or if you're doing TikTok, I don't, you're, you know more about TikTok than I do, but I think it's telling your story, and I think it's only you're only trying to sell a part of the time. And I think for me, YouTube was never about my farm in terms of the business and selling food. Um, I don't think I can't think of many situations where they're like, "Yeah, I saw your YouTube channel, and now I want to buy food from you." Like that has not happened to me personally. I don't, right? Yeah. I, have you had that experience with any of your like content creation? But yeah, it's not it's not a food seller. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, it it, and that's the one thing about Instagram is it really. I think started out that way, but realized like everybody was using it for their craft because I was, you know, not everybody, a lot of people use it to connect to their customers. And I think it's a great form now to connect to your customers. It wasn't really when it first started, it was kind of like the anti Facebook. Facebook was how you connected to your customers. Now Facebook is less relevant. And now Instagram is kind of the place where you connect to your customers more. Uh, But I think, yeah, I think I thought it would, but it, it certainly has been more, um, you know, the videos and Instagram in particular have been more about connecting to other farmers um, in the podcasts. But the, you know, the podcast is like, like you said, it's something I started to 
learn more. Like I wanted to call farmers and ask them questions and, and, and then get that information and share it with other people because I knew other people had those same questions or had, you know, were curious about how like in the beginning, no till was not a, like it was, (laughs) there was almost no information about it. So somebody had to do that work. Um, and filling that niche helped for our, for our popularity. Certainly. Um, I'm curious, like, with the YouTube stuff for you, like, how did you, I mean, what, let me think about how to ask this question. Like, do, when people ask you, like, can you make money doing YouTube? Like, what do you say? Like, what's your, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can. Um, it's most, most people that start don't get very far into it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you have to work really hard at it and be consistent. And there's a little bit of luck in it as well. I think I don't, I, I, people get into YouTube for different reasons, right? We go back to intention, right? Like I didn't get into it to make money, but all of a sudden YouTube turns on my monetization and they're like, Hey, we'll pay you for these videos. And I'm like, okay, I guess I should, you know, make them better, work harder at it, that kind of thing. Um, you just, it's like a, it's a job for me now. I mean, I post twice a week, I'm on a schedule and that's, you know, as a content creator, and I know we both agree on this, that we set our own schedules, our own pressure. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that people don't realize about the people that are making content is that, you know, we have so much pressure on ourselves to keep creating content and no one's telling us to do it. Yeah. Oh can, yeah. Can you talk about that at all? Yeah. It's self-inflicted. Why like, do we do this? I don't know. I mean, but we do it because all the, the intentions there, I think that without that, like if you're just doing it to make money, you probably won't get there. But if you're doing it because you think there's a potential for income because of the ad revenue, but also like you enjoy sharing, you enjoy learning, then you're probably more likely to get to that point that you're making money doing it. And yep. you also have to be kind of savvy and creative. Like with the podcast in general, like the, the podcast in particular, we can't just monetize. Like we can't just be like, click, we're monetized, you know, throw in your ads and we'll, you know, people listen to those. And I think there are, I think there are options for that now in podcasting, but they're, you know, for us, we don't do that. We go more native advertising where we have people within the industry or advertising on our, on our, on our channel or on our podcast. And that really comes from us going out and getting those advertisers and not from, you know, just being able to get to a certain level and then start getting paid for it. Um, so it is much more like it is a lot of work. Like you really have to work for it for on our side, um, on the podcasting side. And then on the video side, like we're monetized as well. No, no tell growers. The channel is monetized. Um, that took a lot of work. I, I mean, what, how many videos did I have up before we even got monetized? It was a hundred. I don't even know. I did a ton of videos. Um, and it, my videos were ridiculous and I was putting them up in 720 cause I didn't know what I was doing. And that, I mean, that ultimately probably kept the channel from not growing fast enough as I wasn't using great equipment. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have great sound. Uh, but I think I like had the drive to educate or learn and or learn. And then also I kept seeing like it tick up the subscribers and I was getting closer to that thousand subscriber mark. And I was like, okay, well we can get there. Like we can get to the point when this thing is monetized. So, I mean, for some, it's going to take a lot of work, but I think if you maybe kind of like what we were talking about earlier. If you like really put the work in to understand how YouTube works and understand how uh, monetization works and then understand the equipment and how to make a video nice and concise and like attractive because a lot of the new farmers I see that come onto YouTube, uh, they don't seem like they've watched those videos from Think Media or like, you know, really studied the other farmers or the other YouTubers and been like, okay, so this is how they're successful. Yeah, I think back on you know, when we connected, I, it, it's so funny now that I think back on it. Cause I was the third guest on your podcast. Right. right and yeah. then, uh, I don't know if everyone knows that story, but then, you know, we connected months later, we started just chatting about YouTube strategy and right. I don't remember how big our channels were at that point, but we started collaborating right. on, you know, strategizing and talking about technique and helping each other with titles and thumbnails and, you know, ideas for videos and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I didn't even realize that I had this sort of creative element to my personal life. Like I never thought of myself as an artistic person whatsoever. Um, I have a background in engineering and mathematics. So to me, like painting or drawing or anything like that was, but like, I understand video, like I get it Mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun. And I think what you just mentioned was learning how to execute your craft, right? Like I spend a lot of time learning how to make video, how to get better gear, how to edit better, color grade, 
Um, I really focus on that. And that's most of the content that I'm consuming at the moment uh, for the time that I have is like learning how to be a better video creator. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I, I was kind of thinking when you were talking about like we we're kind of on the buddy system. And <laughs> where I'm calling you and be like, what should we do for the thumbnail? And the yeah, and like vice versa. And yeah, a lot of our titles are like, you've done a lot of my titles and I've done some of your titles and that sort of thing. Um, and it's but just kind also, of this back and forth. We're like, how about this? How about this? How about this? And I think that relationship is super important with content creation. Yeah. If you can get that, like, it's like a collaboration. Like if you can get that person who maybe does something different than what you do, like, uh, you know, maybe our trade-off is that you like study the technical stuff and then I've been doing the farming stuff. So if you have farming questions, like I've been doing it for a long time. So maybe like if you have specific farming questions about something that maybe you hadn't had as much experience with, like we can go back and forth about that. So make sure your videos are good and my videos are good. Like that sort of buddy system has been really beneficial to both of our channels and, and just our content creation in general. Yeah. I think no matter what your field is, like find someone that you can connect with and, you know, if we're talking farming, we're talking content creation, you know, we can definitely help each other a lot in both those situations. I don't know how much I help you with farming, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it happens. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I like watching your videos. Like, I think that what you do is that you, you know, are very thorough about your videos and to the point that, like, if you're talking about a subject, I know that you actually did research and you have experience with it, which is important because sometimes you watch these videos and, you know, they just, they're just speaking from their own experience and ha didn't look to see like what other people said about that particular tool or that particular method. Um, but I think you often bring all that in and that's really valuable as, you know, somebody who's watching that content and as somebody who's creating content, maybe like one thing you told me was like, anytime before you make a video, go watch all the other videos and see what they're missing, like what they didn't say or like what everybody says and like, does that, you know, relate to what you know about that subject. Yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah, I don't do as much of that as I l would like to, but I remember specifically with Trellis to Make You Jealous, I know we were talking about that before, um, I had watched all the Trellis videos I could find, and I kind of was like, there isn't the one I want, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that was also the kind of strategy I took with my channel was, you know, I'd been consuming a ton of YouTube content, you know, watching all the stuff I could find online about market gardening and permaculture and all that stuff. And so to me, when I started my channel, I was thinking, I know exactly what I want to do. I know where I'm going to fit in the, the industry. I want to have this sort of audience. You know, I try to go from gardening to homesteading to small scale farming. It's kind of a mixture. Uh, I've had content all over the place from growing vegetables to animals to marketing and sales to all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I try to put a lot of thought into my videos and, you know, keeping up is tough, but the more time and energy that you put in, the more quality content. And I think that that value idea, like what value can we provide for our audience, I think is the whole thing when you're talking about a podcast or, you know, a YouTube video, something like that. Like we're trying to create value so that our audience is getting something from it. Right. Like when you're talking about watching videos for content, like you're a lot of the content you're consuming is about content creation. Yeah. It's about how can I bring better even if it doesn't sound like it, it is about bringing better value to the viewer because you're wanting to make it entertaining, uh, beautiful to watch. You're wanting to really draw them in. And I think they're like, that is something that maybe gets underappreciated and just the, the, the work of content creation is like that side of the craft of like, there is a whole craft to it. Like the type of microphone that you're using, the, you know, how, uh, how you're editing it, who's editing it for you, whether or not you're, what site you're putting it up on and, you know, those sorts of things. I mean, it's like, there's a, there's a lot to the craft side of creating content, um, that adds value to the viewer or consumer or listener, etc. Yeah. I, I just jump, whatever I'm into, like I get way into it. I, that's my <laughs> personality. Like I, I right. know that about myself. And one thing I noticed about the farming content that was out there, there was great content. Like the, like the content was good. There was valuable information out there, but I didn't see, like it was a lot of shaky cameras, you know, like not sharp images, that not great audio, all that kind of stuff. And so for me, like I focused on creating good value, but also like trying to deliver it in a, in a, a way that's nice to digest. Mm -hmm. And I love being on both sides of the camera. Like I don't always have to be in front of the camera. In fact, I love being behind the camera and I love visiting other farmers and showing what they're doing and using that audience to promote what, what other people are doing. And I think that's something I've really started to enjoy a lot. Um, I could care less about being in front of the camera most of the time, but I'm the one delivering the information and I'm by myself, so I have to do it. Right, right. 
yeah, if you had your druthers, what's the what's the alternative? You like have a cast and I don't know. I, I enjoy filming other people. It's fun for me as a filmmaker, a videographer, to be behind the camera because, yeah. you know, when I'm filming myself, like, all right, go set up the camera, you know, get all the, get all the exposure right, get the, get everything right, push record, jump in front of the camera, start doing your thing, go back and change it. It's chaotic. <laughs> it's chaotic sometimes, and yeah. it's it's stressful because sometimes, especially when you're not used to the equipment you're using, you get distracted and can't like deliver the information in a clear way or you forget what you're trying to talk about. And so I think people need to realize how hard some of this stuff is. Yeah. Um, and you, you really have to work at it. I think podcasting is probably a lot harder than I haven't done any of it. I've been on podcasts, but you know, yeah. What are some challenges that you've had like trying to improve your quality? Yeah. I mean, well, improving the quality often came down to what we were using, like gear, the gear really matters, but knowing which gear to buy, which was helpful for you to be able to help me research that. Um, and, but also like with podcasting, it's sort of similar to what you were saying, just that you're trying to draw out the information from someone else. I think that's what I really enjoy. Like I remember listening. The interview. The interview is so much fun. The art of the interview. Like that's something that I research and study a lot too. And I, I remember Terry Gross, Fresh Air's Terry Gross. I'm sure people know who Terry Gross is. Um, the, you know, just listening to her, she would go through a lot of other interviews from like say a, you know, celebrity or whoever she was interviewing and she would always look for the questions that you know the that they hadn't been asked on said book tour or said movie tour or whatever she wanted to like get them to get out of their just like block answer and I thought that was really cool and I try and treat the podcast like that that you know we start out with a basic question just about like to, to, to sort of calibrate everyone where their farm is what size it is and all those sorts of things but as the conversation goes I'm always like what can I ask that I haven't asked other guests or what's like some part of this farming thing that we need to draw out that we haven't talked about. Um, the interview is so much harder than you think it is. I remember the first few times that I went to go interview a farmer, like shooting a video, YouTube video. And I, you know, I know how to work my camera. I know how to do the thing. I'd set up the shots and then I point the camera at the person and I thought, Oh, now I have to ask some questions. <laughs> you know, I had that moment where I'm like, Oh, now I know why interviewers like they just interview, like they're really good at interviewing people. Yeah. And I think one thing I've loved about your podcast is that it's very conversational and I try to do that as well. Like I usually have some questions or concepts or topics that I want to talk about and try to steer the conversation, but generally I just let it happen. Yeah. I, it's funny too, because it's, I feel like I'm not always a good interviewer. And what I realized about that is that when I'm listening to in interviews on NPR or my favorite podcasts or whatever, they're not always the best interview either. Like sometimes they miss the question and I hate it when I'm editing and I'm like, I missed the question. Like I missed I the opportunity. Asked them this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear it. It goes by and I just, for whatever reason, like I was concentrating on my notes or like trying to mess with something technical and I just missed it. Like, or it just didn't come to me, but th that happens like sometimes, or sometimes you're just, you're just not, like in the mood like you just don't have a good day or like you're not feeling good or whatever and you're just like you know like but that's the thing is when the interview you always want to like so yeah. the thing that's maybe different from like making videos is like when you're hosting somebody else like you're just like buck up dude like this is an awesome opportunity and you're giving it to this like you're you're gonna get to hear this person's farm and like that's ex super exciting so there's always this moment where if i'm in a bad mood i'm always like this is awesome. Like, this is going to be, this is going to be great. And like, I'm excited to hear this person's farm and I like get, remember what I'm doing. And that, that often helps. Yeah. I think one of the hardest things also is it's often the first time you've met the person and right. Yeah. There's that social element where you're like trying to connect with them, trying to make the conversation work. Mm -hmm. Like just in life, when you meet people, you don't always have a great conversation with someone yeah. and you're trying to make them tell their story. And uh, I do it live. You would never do that. Like with growers live. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a challenging one. Most of the time the guests on there, Never talked to him. Never even messaged, like, besides, like, setting up the interview. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and it, that's tough. But it that's is. also something that's fun. Like, getting to know somebody really quick is, like, kind of fun. It's kind of exciting. It is. Um, it doesn't always click. Like, sometimes it, interviews are more awkward than maybe they sound after the edit, which I give you props because live is much different. I can at least edit out some of the awkwardness. <laughs> but, yeah, like, in, in a live interview, yeah, it's, it, you don't get to do that. But uh, what about, I mean, I was thinking just a minute ago when I was talking about... Um, you know, just waking up and being like, I don't know, I don't feel well, or I like, yeah, I like had a stressful day, or I'm like doing taxes and I'm like, whatever, finishing up the interview season. But 
what about you? Like with videos, like you said, you have to produce twice a week. So I'm, and I know have to, <laughs> you have to, well, no, that's like, just my schedule. You know, right, self-inflicted, well, you, right, yeah, the self-inflicted have to, uh, yeah, it's hard, man. There's some days where, um, I'm just like, you know what? I don't really feel like talking to the camera today, you know? And I did that monthly, if, if anyone had seen that, I did a monthly vlog series. The daily vlog. Sorry, say daily for a month. Yeah, yeah sorry. Look at where my brain's going with that. Yeah, so <laughs> that was insane. Um, I, I've always respected that intense content creation. Like, you know, most people probably know about Casey Neistat like doing daily vlogs for 600 days or whatever he did. And I was always amazed by it. And I think that sort of opened my mind about a lot of video you know, content creation, filmmaking, mm -hmm. when you have to turn the camera on every day. Yeah. But yeah, there are some days where you're just like, you know what, I really don't feel like doing this. Yeah. You know, because you have to be, you know, at least in a decent mood. If you go out there all grumpy and record a video, <laughs> remember like, come on, Josh, like really? Like maybe Here's you shouldn't have recorded. stupid soil block video. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know about this, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's important to, uh, you know, to be energetic and positive. And I think one thing I've really steered away from is negativity. On my yeah, channel like yeah. i really i stay focused on farming you know i don't veer off con off subject for about we were just talking about farming or the business of farming and growing food yeah. and the people around it um but i really don't want to just i got to stay positive i think there's just so much negativity i think you know all the work that we've worked on together it's just like hey let's talk about all the cool stuff going on let's share what these people are doing but uh yeah some days you just uh or like some days like for me like i film everything outside for the most part and like all right i'm gonna shoot a video on thursday and it's raining. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, I had some other stuff to do on Friday, so I have to like hurry up and do all this other stuff. And then Friday, it's like, all right, I have like an hour to shoot this video, and you're like <laughs> rushing it, and then you're not right. happy with it. So right. it's challenging, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I think like back to the original point, like, is it is it worth it to create the content? And I think it comes down to like, if you're driven and you really want to offer that information and you feel like you have something to give or something to share or a story to share and you're also you know like willing to put in the work um then maybe maybe yeah i don't know <laughs> i mean it, it comes down to intention and goals i mean i think yeah. for instagram for example if you have a farm business i think you need to be on there telling your story because people want to know who their farmers are that's why people are going to farmers markets signing up for a csa coming to a farm store mm -hmm. um they want to know who their farmer is and that's a great way for you to share your story and i think we i know we've been talking about intention of your channel or your account but i think the intention also is intention with all of your posts like don't just snap a picture of something and you know throw it up there like be intentional and i think that's one way that i've gotten a lot of traction is you know being intentional with okay so the picture we're talking instagram here should grab your attention should ask a question mm -hmm. to me like photography in general that's something we talk about before is like does that picture make you ask a question because if you're scrolling you gotta stop the scroll yeah you know you're scrolling through and you're like what what, what the, is that what is that and then you read the description but if you just show pictures of nice pretty veggies and then like i know that's what my youtube i mean my instagram looks like it's just like all beautiful yeah. farm photos and also knowing your social, I mean, we talked about this a little bit, but knowing what your social media is focused on, like Instagram is more about connecting to the customer. Facebook is more about connecting to the customer. YouTube is about sharing. Like, I don't think you're going to connect to that many customers through your YouTube channel unless you have already have like a great mailing list, email list, and you can send out your videos to them. And maybe, maybe that is one way and people would like to see your farm that way, but they'd probably rather just see like a 30 second clip from on Instagram yeah, when I, they're scrolling. Yeah. If you're, if you're trying to share your farm story. I think you could do a really good job on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Versus like YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're trying to use it as a marketing element yeah. for your farm. And I think one big thing to think about with marketing on social media, like Instagram, for example, like you're going to have to sell sometimes, right? You're going to have to be like, mm -hmm. come find me at the farmer's market or we're selling this new product or, you know, you're going to have to say at some point, like, Hey, I'm selling this thing, but only do that like one out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. Like don't, if you're selling on every post, no one's going to care about your, your accounts anymore. If they're looking for your story and trying to connect with you most times, then when you do sell, you sell hard, right? Like come at them and they'll know you're selling, right. but most of the time they're trying to connect with you. Right. It's sort of like, uh, it's sort of like getting tokens in an arcade. Are arcades still a thing? It's like getting tokens in an arcade. And at the end, like you're, you're sharing like a picture, a picture and each one's kind of like a token. And then when you want to cash in, you do the sell. So like every time you share a picture, think of it like a token and then getting a token. And then when you're ready to cash in, you cash in. And that way you've, you've 
you know, got a lot more people involved in what you're doing and they're more interest and, and that way. Yeah. Like if people are constantly being asked to buy something, to buy something. Yeah, I agree. They're, it's it's going to be a turn off. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about all the things to do and not do on Instagram, but in general, I think it's like, in, it's about intention, right? Like, what are you trying to do? You know, tell your story. I think right. that's like what I try to do on my YouTube channel. I'm not as active on Instagram now, just I'm too busy with YouTube, but yeah. Intention, tell your story. Yeah. Stay focused on it. Yep. Yeah. And quality content. And quality content. <laughs> Yep. Like this. <laughs> All right. You have anything else you want to add, Jesse? Um, uh, I'm, is it beer 30 yet? I think it is. Okay. It's beer 30. All right. I'll add that. <laughs> it's beer 30. All right. Cool. <laughs>